Green olives. Green olives. Great. <laughs> broccoli. Can I say broccoli too? Broccoli. Yeah, absolutely. I never want to have pizza with you, ever. <laughs> Scott, we are here. The Socality Show is live. Can you believe it? Zach, this is our very debut show. You're looking good, by the way. I like your set. Hey, thanks. I like your set. Thank you so much. It's amazing that we both <laughs> wore the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. I just walked into my office and this was here. I had no oh, idea. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, we're so excited today. This is the very debut show. We've got our amazing guest, Jessica Kobesi. She is an incredible photographer and YouTube. We're so excited. She'll be coming on in just a few, ten, uh, in just 10 minutes. But we're excited about this show because we're doing this live, Zach. This yes, is we are. On YouTube. People are watching on YouTube. People are listening to the podcast. But there are people that are literally watching this live. And this is so exciting. The live oh, studio mean. audience. Look under your seat. There might be something there. <laughs> Wherever you are, we snuck into your house in the middle of the night and put something under there. Um, this is We've designed this show just to be super fun, to be a way for our community to connect and engage with each other um, and get to know people in the audience and also provide an opportunity for people to connect with our guests. And we're going to be bringing on awesome guests who can inspire us around so many different um areas of life, entrepreneurs, CEOs, authors, great creators. And so I'm excited today. Um, we also have a Q&A function and you can ask questions there that throughout the interview with Jessica, we'll bring up a few of those. Um, now, one other thing, uh, at the end, we're going to have a segment called the win of the week. And we want to hear something that's been going on in your life that you're excited about. Just right. a, a win, however big or small. And through these different points of engagement, the chat, the Q&A, the win of the week, we're actually going to give away the mystery box. Ooh, so this is really cool. I'm really excited about the mystery box because I think you've got it with you, don't you, the mystery I box? I do, yeah. What's it look like? It, it looks way stranger than I thought. It's a very ornate box, and it, it took the strength of three men uh, to carry. Mm -hmm. I don't even have the strength of one. So I had, to, I had to rally a team around me and we got this thing upstairs. I actually have it under the desk right now. Right. Well, I'm really excited because I heard today in the mystery box, there's an incredible prize and someone today is going to win that. All you have to do is be the MVP of the chat room. What does that look like? Engage, throw questions out, cause, make us laugh, say something that maybe, maybe adds value to the show. Whoever it is, we've got our team watching. They're going to be there in the, in the chat room and they're going to decide. And at the end of the week, uh, end of the show, we're going to hear who the winner of the mystery box is. And so keep chatting, keep talking. It's going to be great. And the win of the week. So start thinking about your win. We're going to call that out at the end. Whatever it is for you, maybe you started a blog or you just got your first camera. Maybe it is you took a walk or you started exercising or you started a new juice cleanse. I don't know. Whatever it is, just share those little wins with us. And or maybe you won a million dollars. I don't know. Whatever it is, big, small, it doesn't matter. But let us know. So start thinking about your win of the week. I can't wait to hear those. This is going to go on to YouTube tomorrow. So if you, um, um, you can rewatch it there, but we're excited about our guest, Jessica Kobesi, who's going to be joining us right away. And she actually, we had her on a workshop that we did, and she actually was like, you guys should do a show. I want to come on your show. And we had been thinking about a show. And so she was kind of a bit of a fire starter. And so we're so glad that she's our first guest. So you guys are going to love her. If you're not familiar with her already, you're about to be, and I'm yeah. excited for you. She's super fun. Let me introduce our guest, and then we're going to bring her on here. Um, Jessica Kobesi is an Arab American portrait and fashion photographer from, from Detroit, Michigan, graduating with a BFA in graphic design. She worked at a marketing agency as a designer for two years. After being laid off from her job, she switched gears to become a photographer full time. This allowed her to focus solely on photography, eventually kickstarting her YouTube channel. Listen to this. With over 120 million views, she is the number one female photographer on YouTube and has created several popular viral photography series such as four photographers shoot the same model and taking pictures of strangers she's worked with top modeling agency and she is also a canon brand ambassador she is incredible please welcome to the show jessica kobesi the crowd there goes she wild there she is welcome here i unmuted first before i said anything. hey nice so Hi guys just 120 million views uh, is that good 
Yeah, it's 130 some million views now. You got, to update the show notes. <laughs> you got 10 million between when Scott started reading that intro and when he finished it. You're popular. <laughs> The reaction videos have been great. You know, a lot of people have been watching them. And so I got like a boost of views in like the last month. So it's been pretty crazy. Yeah, reaction videos are huge right now on TikTok and on YouTube. Tell us um, about these reaction videos. Where did you get the inspiration for this? So I'm a fan of Brad Mondo. I love his videos. He does a lot of reaction videos. He reacts to people like bleaching their hair and their hair coming out and he does so many of those and I am being a photographer and working in the industry and working with professional models and agencies I thought hey like why not react to the photo shoot portion of the show because I grew up watching America's Next Top Model I was a huge fan so I just thought it would be fun to kind of do like he reacts to the the portion where they do the makeovers with the hairstyles and everything. So I was like, oh, well, they also do photo shoots and judging where they critique the photo, which is exactly like what I went through in college. And again, I do the photo shoots now. So I just thought it would be fun. And at first I started just critiquing the photos. And then I eventually started doing like the entire, like watching the actual photo shoot video, like them actually doing it where they set up the lights. And so it just became a thing. Right. It's funny because on TikTok, it's just, you know, people do like blind reactions and it's so funny because their response in the moment is so hilarious. Are you doing blind reactions? Yeah, they're always blind reactions. (laughs) I haven't watched a show show in so long, like blind reactions, like I've never watched it before, right? Right. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. That's exactly yes, what totally, I do because I can't totally. fake a genuine reaction. No, because no, a genuine reaction is so important. Yeah. So awesome. So we've got some rapid fire questions for you just to jump into it, get to know you more. And then um, if you've got questions in the audience, make sure you're bringing them up and we can take them as well. And then we're going to dive deeper into your story. And we're really excited to learn more about that. So let's jump into the rapid um, a fire oh, question. Are you ready, ready for this? You ready for this? I'm ready. I like, I like your plant, by the way. It looks very good. <laughs> you guys, fun story. Before before we started recording this, I was like, hey, I have a fake plant. Let me like be uh, be cohesive with you guys. So I added my fake I like plant it. right here. It's very good. Okay, here we go. Rapid fire. Let's go. Are you a morning or a night person? Night person. What is the worst imaginable, imaginable flavor of ice cream? Say pistachio. I'm sorry. I, I'm Arab. I should probably like that, but I, it never, it never grew on me. I'm sorry. You can say it. What is, what is one thing that annoys you the most? Um, Scott, can I? What is? Well, I was trying to like rephrase it like they do in Jeopardy, but it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the form what of they say? In the form Can of I have blah 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 for a thousand dollars? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> can I have what annoys me the most for a thousand? Can I have what annoys me? I'm just, I'm I, what annoys me? Because I thought you were just going to say Scott, so I'm glad that <laughs> sentence continued. <laughs> There's your answer. I no, I love Scott. Me and Scott are besties. Come on. Thank you, of course. Thank my you. My favorite, can, obviously, you know, is active, but you know, you guys are both my favorite. You Canadian. said it. I'm your favorite Canadian. It came, the words came <laughs> out of your mouth. You All right. <laughs> cool. Okay. okay. What, what annoys me the most? Yeah. One of my biggest pet peeves are people who are late. Mm-hmm. But That's look, like I'm, I'm not trying to call myself out because I've also been late, like five, 10 minutes. Sometimes look, it happens. I get it. But it does, it, it does annoy me, but I get over it. Yeah, no, that's good. Right. Okay. Uh, if you had a theme song, what would it be? Um, it's a Kid Cudi song, actually, a soundtrack to my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I just love his music, but okay. actually he has, a, he has a song called Soundtrack to My Life. So I feel like that. Okay. There you he go. Made it for you. That's your theme song. Okay. If you ha- if there's one snack food left on the planet and y- um, what is it? What would you wish it to be? Snacks. I love all I do is snack. Like I get yelled at by doctors and my family for snacking. Like all I do is snack. I don't even eat meals anymore. I can just see okay. doctors yelling at you. You're snacking too much. S- seriously, they're like, you need to, you know, my Stop cholesterol snacking. was high at one so point. My blood snack? sugar. What snack? Um God, should I like go into my I don't even I well, eat, your snack drawer? I, I I do have like a snack drawer. Um I couldn't even tell. I eat, um, there's like these pretzels with chocolate and Ooh, caramel are, over it. Oh, it's good. like a bit giant mm-hmm. like pretzel mm-hmm. with just like chocolate good. over it. I know yeah, it's probably terrible. Good. It is terrible for me, but you know, 
You only yeah. live once. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just eat it. <laughs> eat the pretzel. My doctor's like, excuse me. I watched the live stream. Let me talk to you about that. <laughs> yeah, if you had to change your name, change your first name to something right now, witness protection program about to print the passport, what do you pick? Selena, maybe. I don't know. Selena, <laughs> Selena, it is. There's a Selena in the chat. Thanks, Big, uh, beautiful yes, name. Yes. Yeah, Big confidence <laughs> boost to Selena in the chat. What? It's a beautiful name. It is. Um, what is the show you're watching right now? Your go-to show? Always Sunny in Philadelphia. My favorite show. And, uh, you know, The Office, but I've watched that so many yeah. times. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scott, ask another one because I want to ask mine last year. Okay, so, of yeah, course. Right. What is one thing or one person that you would like to photograph the most? Melanie Martinez. I would love to photograph her. I love her music. I love her aesthetic and her style. Melanie, if you're listening, Makes make sense. dreams come true. Make dreams She's come amazing. True. Okay. And, and lastly, exactly. yeah, this one's for the folks in the chat. Uh, Jess, favorite pizza topping? Oh, my. Here we go. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know what? I said corn before, but let me switch it up. <laughs> Let's switch it up. Let's do something new. What about green olives? Green olives. Great. <laughs> broccoli. Can I say broccoli too? Broccoli. Yep. Absolutely. I never want to have pizza with you ever. <laughs> Guys, last olives are like a, a, a staple pizza topping. What Absolutely. are you talking about? <laughs> Okay. The last time we had Jess on, we asked her about pizza and she said corn was her favorite topping, which I thought was a totally like normal answer. I have pizza with corn all the time. And the chat just went nuts. I hopped onto my phone after the show. My inbox was full of people DMing me about like, like corn and they had turned like Jess into memes with corns. They were calling her like sure. Jessica Corn Basie and it became a whole thing. I still get, I still get DMs and comments about it. People will like tag me in pictures of corn. Yeah. So, okay. Um, that, that brings a close to the rapid fire question, but those were some great answers. So um, you always bring us the life. Now the green olives. I don't know if there's an emoji for that. So we might not get, there's Brock. Is there a broccoli emoji? There must be. There must yeah, be. I think so. There must All right. Be. Everyone drop the broccoli emoji. If there's one in there. Way too um, bit of a source of iron to not justify an emoji. Now moving on a little bit to uh, let's go, let's go before uh, before we all know you as a, as a photographer, as a YouTuber and corn aficionado, let's go back to the early days of, uh, of the corn queen. What was it like growing up? Did you have any siblings? What were the early days of your life like? So, yeah, I grew up in Detroit and my parents immigrated there from Lebanon. So they didn't really know anybody. They pretty much left their families to come to the United States and I grew up with five other siblings, two sets of twins. And it was, you know, growing up with that many siblings, I'm sure anyone in the chat can relate that there's just it's always something going on, fighting, drama, like parties, not parties in that sense, but just little gatherings here and there and just kind of keeping up with all my siblings. But, it, you know, it was really nice to have somebody always there like me and my brother were super close we're still very close we grew up playing video games with each other like I would watch him play video games I would play video games so I kind of got that love of video games from him you know we just grew up having that in common and I just have different relationships with all of my siblings I'm super close to all of them so yeah I mean growing up in Detroit was great I only have good memories really being there I was outside a lot went to elementary school there. I, you know what? I actually, I think I confuse a lot of people because I mentioned Lebanon so much and, and being there. And I think a lot of people thought I was I, like, I'm my, my family is from Lebanon and I am Lebanese, but people thought that I was born in Lebanon. So people were like, well, how do you feel about living in America? And like, I'm like, I'm, I was born and raised here. Right. So that's my fault. Cause I feel like I confuse so many people. Right. Um, you know, the, the, it's so interesting because we're here, you know, we're giving you this intro 130 million. And by the time you're watching this, I'm sure it'll be <laughs> two bazillion. Um, but, you know, photography, YouTube, this is so awesome. We were talking earlier about TikTok. But do you recall your very first interaction with a camera? And if so, what camera was that? What was that experience like for you? I think somebody in my family got this Kodak easy. It's like called the easy share. You like 
it came with like a printer and you like put the camera on the printer and just printed out the photos. So me and my sister, I would take my sister outside to the backyard and like just do little photo shoots, really nothing (laughs) serious. But you know, we would, I, during that time, Facebook was just starting out. There was obviously MySpace. And so we would mostly take pictures just to like post, but they were like really overexposed, over contrasted photos. And I was, I, I was into graphic design. So I would like always over edit them and bump the saturation up like to hundred percent. So that, those were like my first interactions with really taking pictures. And I never really thought about it more than just, Hey, we need a picture. I need a picture of myself. Cause you know, also I was like part of message boards and a lot of the times we would call them like MBs for anybody who would even know what that was. And so there would be like a message board um, that you would post pictures of yourself to like show people who you are. Cause like back then there was no Facebook. There was uh-huh. like, was it MySpace wasn't really, uh, maybe it was, but basically you would use that picture to like introduce yourself and like get comments on it. So that was like my first time really and I would take pictures of my with my webcam my really old Logitech like circular webcam I would take pictures of I was like 13 I still have those photos so you you fell in love with photography just from the get-go no I did not you didn't oh okay you know I didn't when I was taking pictures back then like on webcams and pictures of my sister for fun or just pictures of a leaf. I didn't think of it more than just, oh, just taking pictures. But I think what really piqued my interest is seeing a lot of wedding photography on Facebook and how they were taking photos and being from a design background. I love to edit and manipulate photos and retouch. And so I wanted to do that, but I needed the pictures to be able to edit. So I, and I wanted to be able to take my own pictures. So I thought, okay, if I'm going to sit and edit pictures and retouch and stuff, I'll just take my own pictures. It can't be that hard. And then that's when I really started to fall in love with it after I like took the pictures and then brought it into Photoshop and started like retouching, editing my earlier photos. They looked crazy, like so much color, so much editing. They're so different from my style now, but you know, it's part of my growth. And then moving along from kind of picking up the camera for the first time to starting YouTube for the first time, do you remember what the first YouTube video you ever made was about? A lot of editing videos on my, on my, on my main channel, I started off literally just editing Photoshop. I never showed my face. I was actually really insecure about being on camera. I'm like, oh, people are probably going to call me ugly. And I I didn't want to be like made fun of. So I didn't really put myself out there so that's why a lot if you go back in my older videos my probably like the first 10 15 20 videos it's just my voice just talking about editing and then I was like and then I think it was like a year after that where I was like if I want to continue doing this I need to be on camera eventually and I was like super awkward I was very uncomfortable like I was not confident being on camera like I am now so I just kind of Took, I'm like, you know what? If I get roasted, I get roasted. Let's go. Yeah. So I was just, I just kind of threw myself into it. It's <laughs> nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking, isn't it? Because people think, you know, when you go on social media, you're on Instagram, you're on YouTube, that, um, you know, it's, you, you know, you're not, don't have any feelings, but like you got to just kind of put yourself out there and be prepared for the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? You got to put yourself out there. And it is nerve wracking, isn't it? Yeah. But that is what comes with, putting yourself on the internet. I mean, you kind of just expect it and you just have to handle it the absolute best you can. And there's no perfect formula. There's not a manual on how to deal with these types of things. For me, I really try my best to, I get, I really j- truly focus on photography on my channel. I, tr- I try to just kind of just do my thing and not get into anything where it could, like I could stir up anything. I, I really just try my best, but I definitely expect it. We got a really good question from Raj here about the beginning of your creative journey. He says, uh, what's one thing you wish you knew back in the beginning phase of your creative journey? If you could go back and have lunch with 13 year old webcam Jess and let her know (laughs) something, (laughs) what would you tell her? Just to be more confident because I really wasn't. Mm. And maybe just be more assertive overall. I, there were photo shoots where people would tell, like boss me around, tell me what to do. And 
I just never, I was very much an introvert and I, I, I'm a mix of both. I'm like an ambivert. If I, if I'm being honest, like I know on YouTube, I may seem like I am outgoing, but there's always a time where I just want to be alone. I don't want to talk to anybody. So, and I'm still very much like that. So I wish I was just a little bit more assertive and I, I wish I was more upfront about my feelings towards certain things with people that I work with. Mm -hmm. That's really good. It seems like you've really figured out a, a cool mix of creativity and consistency as you make things for your audience. Now, I know we have a, a number of uh, YouTubers or aspiring YouTubers in the audience right now. What advice would you give to someone who's just getting started? You know, they, they love your work. They love following along with what you do on YouTube and they're looking to establish themselves. Um, what's a piece of advice you'd pass on? I think it's all about consistency. I mean, I, first of all, last night I was on TikTok laughing so hard because I was I was on TikTok for hours. They are hilarious. Like, they'll get you. I love I they'll love Gen you. Z. Gen yeah. Z is my favorite. The comments. They're hilarious. It's the comments for me. I just cry. Hilarious. Like they come up with like the best stuff. But I started realizing that anybody can really make it on TikTok or even on YouTube if they just keep consistent with their content and thinking of new ideas. I've, I've seen some of the most creative concepts on TikTok. And these people are, they're not like celebrities, they're just average people who try to think of new ideas and keep refreshing their content, keeping updated with the times and the political environment and what's going on in the world. All those factors really, really just bring like a, a wider audience, I think. So uh, taking a look at elements like that is really important when you want to grow on YouTube or on TikTok. I have my TikToks when we have a couple of videos on there, but it's so hard for me to be on YouTube, be on TikTok. I'm trying to do both. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, but consistency is the key. I think with everything, just keep posting. Um, what about for those people that are watching that are asking the question, okay, I'll post every day, but what about just finding a theme? How does someone find their theme that they want to share, be known for? It happens. 100% naturally. Right. If you try to do a theme, yeah, yeah, you're gonna, you can get away with it. But at the same time, the the best kind of content just happens naturally. Like, I, I started this, I recently started this series, it's called low res with Jess. And I wasn't even thinking of really calling it that but I was I did zoom calls and the quality was so res low resolution. I was like, let's just play up on the fact that it's low resolution, whatever. Right. And it just can't, I didn't even think about it. I wasn't trying to make it into this kind of theme, but it just kind of fit together. So I would just say, let it happen organically. That's the best way. And, and just not hyper-focus on, okay, we need to like come up with a certain style. That's really good advice. Like Thank you a, guys. Great. We've got an awesome, yeah. We've got an awesome question here from Nelson. That's got a little bit of encouragement for you built into it. It says, Jessica, uh, your photos make me feel really happy, creative, and proud of you, even though I don't know you. What a great creator. Thank um, you. I wanted to know uh, if you still feel insecure sometimes about your work and how do you get past that? Mm. I, I still do. Because you find yourself in the cycle where you're constantly comparing yourself, especially during these times. Like I haven't shot in like almost two months now. So it's been a while since I've actually photographed anybody and it's hard. And I, I know a lot of people are also dealing with the same issues because of the climate, of what we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. but what I would say is just look back at your work and see what you can improve on like what I do is I, I re-edit old photos sometimes and I try to just give myself space to learn like I'm not a perfect photographer I can always improve and I, I think I try to see that as more of a positive thing like it's kind of exciting to be able to create new work like okay like maybe that photo shoot didn't go well but I'm going to try to do this concept is going to be even better. So I, in, in a weird way, I try to look at learning new things and improving as a, an exciting thing and not as something that is like a chore. So there can be a little bit of excitement and knowing that you need to improve because every photographer can improve on something. None of us are perfect. We, a lot of photographers who you, like I look up to too, I'm sure have the, that same thought, like, oh, I know that I could do better and my lighting could be better. We all want to do new things. So like, don't, just don't overthink it. Be confident yeah. in yourself. Even that's I'm still good. working on that too. That's good. So do you ever feel like, cause you're doing these shoots with these other photographers, you're shooting models and, and you're looking at it, obviously consuming other people's content online. Do you ever just go into your room and be like, oh, I suck. I hate this. I want to quit. Like, do you ever feel like that? 
all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's hard not to kind of really think about where you went wrong and every little thing that you've ever done. Yeah. I go to sleep. I don't. I can't even sleep thinking about like, why did I say this one thing in the video, and why didn't I do this? Why did the? I did a video where I didn't even the audio like I brought the audio but I didn't even plug in the cord for it to even work and so the sound was wrong I'm like why didn't I do that well, I'm so annoying why didn't I think of that, about that so I really I get mad at myself a lot for the things that I do so I'm just trying to be a little bit more forgiving and you know be nicer to myself yeah. overall it's good to know that you feel that too because I think that's a common feeling within people mm-hmm. you know? really yeah I'm like- not perfect by any means yeah oh. I really like that piece of advice you gave about viewing um, the things you know you can improve on as opportunities to learn rather than being frustrated that you don't know yet. I think that's such an empowering piece of advice. Um, And you mentioned video games earlier. Like I know when you buy a new game and there's parts of the game that are not unlocked yet is like half the excitement of playing it and going and discovering. And then to take that as like a, a picture for our creative journeys and realizing the things that we don't know yet or the capabilities we don't have are just parts that are not unlocked yet and we can discover it. I love that piece of advice. Thank you for that. That's great. I love the video game analogy. That makes a lot of sense. I feel See, left it's, out it's fun I, to think about it in a new way. It is. I feel left out I don't play video games. So <laughs> hey, someone, uh, you've never played a video game? Well, I mean, when I was like young, I played like Mario Brothers, but like I know that there's, I know it's popular. I know, but I know <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> never too late it's never you know too what? late somebody to start something new <laughs> somebody in the chat tell us what game we should get scott started with and i will send it to him in time for our next show so somebody send tell me a me. console as well <laughs> somebody tell me what i'm sending scott ps5 send him the ps5 send him, send him a ps5 and um just dance just dance just dance now just, just I, dance <laughs> i want to see scott on just dance personally sure i'll just dance um so someone's like we sports i can't we sports. Oh my goodness. We sports. Any one of you, if any I have no you, clue what you guys are talking about, I'm we just sports like- is amazing. If any single one of you wants to get dusted in baseball, oh, find me. Okay. Um, now Jess, I know traveling is really important to you. And, um, I know that you love to learn, uh, from the, the people you meet while you're traveling and the cultures you encounter while you're travel- traveling. Talk to us a little bit about okay. what travel has meant to you and a thing or two you've learned while you're out there. Yeah, travel is a big part of not only photography, but my life. I meet so many amazing people. And it's because of photography that I'm able to actually network and make all these friends. Like, I just love the the platform that YouTube has provided for me, because without that, I don't think I would have met half the people that like we do photographer meetups. We did one in Tokyo. We I like I think it was we do we do them in L.A. as well. So it's really nice to have. I think we talked about this in the last um the last episode that we did where people like made friends because of the meetup. So that to me is a huge part, like just bringing the community together is great, but I do meet so many fascinating people. You learn a little bit of their language and culture, I think is super important. And you just, you become inspired all over again. Traveling really gives me this motivation to just do better and I just like, I can't wait to travel again once it's yeah. even just to Canada. Like, I want right. to, if they open the border, I'm there. Come on down. We want yeah. to have you here. We want to welcome you with open arms. Um, but where's the craziest place you've ever traveled? Like, the craziest, like, blew your mind? I think, um, blew my, I mean, J- Japan was definitely the biggest shocker for me. Right. I think Why? right after Why? being in, right after, right after Lebanon, because I hadn't visited, like, I went to Lebanon when I was about three years old. I visited my grandparents and then I was never back until mm. I was 19 years old. The, the next time I went was 19. So I actually like met my grandma for the first time at 19. All my aunts saw me for the first time. And it that was, I think, the most shocking thing because I had like the Middle East is like a whole other world going there at, for the first time was that was an absolute absolute shock. Um, but it, also Japan was very shocking, both in good ways, by the way, like yeah. I was just enamored by all the the different things I was seeing because I was I, I grew up in the United States right and are you are, are you um one of those people that likes to try different foods when you're in places like are you experimental or you just go with the safe route I'm very boring when it comes to food I <laughs> just I broccoli pizza 
<laughs> yeah, just <laughs> well, here here's the thing. In the Middle East especially, it's very rude if people put you food and you don't eat it. That's mm-hmm. it's considered like disrespectful. So, you know, I, I do I'm willing to try new things. I think, you know, showing showing that respect is really important, especially in my culture. So I obviously don't want to upset anybody, but it's also like I try to push myself to try new things in terms of food, but I have a really sensitive stomach. Right. And I try not to I try. I, I watch what I eat pretty much mm. when I'm overseas, but I o- always like to try new things. Just depends what it is. It depends. I'm with you. Listen, I'm on your page. <laughs> I'm, on I'm your a page. very boring eater. You know those people who I'm... will literally try like anything. Like, no, can't not relate. Really. No, not me. There's, there's some very confused people in the chat because at the beginning heard you say I put broccoli on my pizza, and then at the end you're like, and I only eat it's... very normal boring food, and they're like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> really. It's, it's boring. <laughs> Brad's broccoli. Um, now, there's like also a couple of people in the chat um, on the topic of travel talking about a pink dress shoot you did in Japan. And it seems like there's a couple of people who are really pumped about that. Tell us, um, for those who haven't seen it, what the pink dress shoot is and a little bit of the story behind the scenes on that shoot. So the pink dress. First of all, thank you guys. I'm glad you guys like that photo shoot. I, I, like when I was packing for Japan, most of my luggage was dedicated to that one dress. Look, my light just came off. It's, should I go? To, yeah, go turn, turn it back on. Don't worry. This we'll edit light, it for YouTube. It's supposed to it's a stay on break. for 75 minutes. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. This has not been 75 minutes. It's been 75 minutes. Scott, nice mug. Wow. I, I, let me just, this show, show is brought people. to you by the SoCality wow. Show. I don't know why that happened. Like, it's it back to on? on. Don't we? We did a hashtag ad while you were away. Yeah, we did. <laughs> big, big shout out to John from the SoCality team for just like whipping these up and sending them over. I didn't even know they were coming. Right. Much love, John. We just send things to Zach's house and be like, there's an aperture light coming to your house. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's an aperture. It's a, <laughs> I love it. There's a mug coming. Um, okay. Okay. What was the question? The light came pink off. dress. Talk about the pink the dress. Pink dress. Back okay. to the pink dress. Okay. Here we go the pink dress yeah so i had to get a luggage well i mean if the luggage fit other things but i had to it was dedicated mostly to that one dress so i literally took a second big luggage just for the the one dress i bought it off of doll's kill it was like 350 dollars, i believe and it was so much money and i was like should i get i actually didn't get it at first i was like no i'm not gonna spend this money and then last minute, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be in Japan. Like, I've always wanted to do a photo shoot like this. Like, let's just do it. So ended up just buying the dress, stuffing it into my luggage. And then one of my friends, Sarah, she's a model in Japan. Um, she actually lives in Kyoto. So we had to bring her over to Tokyo. We did a video with her in the morning with my friend Manny. And then right after that, we like literally right after that YouTube video, I put her in this dress. I'm like, it's a little... It's a little crazy. Like, is that okay with you? She's like, she was so excited about it the entire time. She's like, oh, I love this. Like, I'm ready to wear it. Cause so, that's, it's a very big eye catching dress. So as right. soon as you step outside, you know, people would be staring, noticeable. especially in the United States, like United yeah. States, you wear anything other than like jeans or something. Like people are like, oh my God, why are you dressed? I don't know. Why are you dressed like so, that? Yeah. So we, I got her dress. She got her makeup done before the photo shoot by a makeup artist. Uh, Again, we did the YouTube video and then we got her dressed and then I had these tights. I don't know. Somebody, somebody asked me if I regret the tights. I don't even know. You you know what? I don't regret it because it is what it is. It happened. (laughs) I put her in like neon green tights. (laughs) You, you just can't you just got to go with it this is that was my choice at the time we, we tried to kind we tried two different types of tights on neon pink and then neon green I knew it, I did want her to wear tights I the thing is I don't have everything like I don't have a lot of and I'm not good at styling in my opinion but we ended up putting her in the green tights I thought it was a cool contrast I was like whatever so went outside with this dress I was expecting everybody to be like oh like they're like a bunch of people wanting to take pictures or you know ask us what we're doing literally nobody cared right people did not care wow. in japan they just walked really? past us and not a person That's not so one person cool, actually did you that must exactly. actually been liberating to create because you know when you're creating you feel like everybody's watching you it almost like inhibits you and you're like oh, you know but d- did you feel freedom in that moment yes but the the problem was that i was still kind of anxious about it because i was okay you you kind of get used to that during photo shoots Mm -hmm. i've had i've had so many shoots 
all of them being in the United States where people interrupt us or want to take pictures with the model, put their hand around the model. They yell things at the models that are really not nice. So I've had so many of those instances where I just kind of conditioned myself like, okay, we got to be on high alert here. Okay. She's coming out in the dress, like get the bodyguards, you know, but yeah, I mean, stepping out outside, I was, I think more anxious. She was having the time of her life. Sarah was she was loving it. She was like twirling around. I'm like, do you want to put on your jacket to cover the dress? She's like, no, I'm out here. I love this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> she was so, I didn't want to like ruin her energy. So I'm like, okay, like, I'm, okay. I might as well just go along with this. So yeah, she, I really just fed off of her energy. We took so many photo shoots. Actually, I'm going to be releasing that video. My friend Manny actually filmed it for us. Um, so we have like a full behind the scenes video. I don't know why I never did a dedicated BTS well, maybe it's because I don't really like editing videos. I like suck at it. But, oh, that's coming soon. <laughs> Still, that's great. What but a yeah, cool that's story. the story of the. That's the story of the, the pink dress. dress. I don't know if there's anything else I can kind of. That was great. About I it. feel. I feel like that was a great um, piece of information. And the tight, like the tight trauma, just having that was an interesting little. Yeah, I mean that question. <laughs> do you like laying awake tight. at night? Were they the right tights? <laughs> You can't go back now. And Zach, what were you saying? You were asking something? Oh, I was gonna say that question, do you regret the tights is really a question that anyone could answer. Do you regret the tights? And <laughs> you know, I don't have a time machine, but if I could, I would probably use that, the time machine that I don't have and then go back and maybe just do new tights, like sheer tights. nude or sheer. maybe sheer green. Green? Maybe. Maybe. But it's we'll okay. Next time. Part two, the pink dress rides again, part two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, someone here is saying that they love the format of the show. I hope you guys are having fun. If you have questions for Jess, make sure you throw them in there. We're having a blast too. We're just having a, a chat. It's so good to see you, by the way, and just um, have this chat. Um, well, let's just ask you this. Like we're talking about, you know, your YouTube journey, photography, and, you know, sometimes you feel frustrated, but at the same time, Zach's highlighting how that can push you. Um, do you, do you, can you kind of like identify uh, one of the hardest roadblocks that you ever faced in your creative journey? Like, was there a time where you were just like, man, I got to overcome this challenge or this moment? Do you recall anything? I think after I do a photo shoot that maybe didn't go like I wanted to, I get really upset with myself. And I, mm -hmm. and I just wish I would have, again, spoken up or was more assertive. I think it's really about working with a creative team in in a way that's professional, but you're still firm on what you want and, and the images come out like what you envision. But I also, also keep in mind that I am working with makeup artists or hair sometimes, and you do want to include their input as well. So I think it's just a lot of the times not letting other people's vision override what I want to see as the final product. And right. I, I was just, I'm just terrified. I, I sometimes I don't like confronting people because right. sometimes people take it the, the wrong way. Like I don't take that stuff personally, but some people you never, you don't know. So I've kind of started working with people who I am comfortable with that, that I can be like, Hey, can you switch up the lipstick? So I've kind of had a steady team of friends and again, creative that I'm familiar with that we can, we work very well together, mm -hmm. but it takes a long time to get to that point. Yeah. Well, talk to us a little bit about the challenges of um, being highly visible on the internet. Like I'm sure in the comment sections, you get tons of stuff that's encouraging and uplifting. <laughs> some stuff that's just like confusing and weird and probably some stuff that's intended to be mean or hurtful. What What's the journey like having a ton of people have an opinion about you and your work? What's that like? When like us as creatives, when we have that journey in photography, we usually do it privately. We grow privately and our process, a lot of people don't see. But for me, a lot of it is on the internet. You can see my earlier shoots and how I was wording and explaining things and how my pictures came out versus now, like 10 years later. So you can literally see all of my progress on the internet. And, and I get comments about like not being a good photographer or, you know, comments about how I was in certain videos. And I just try to remind myself, like, this is my process. I'm always learning. I'm not perfect. And the people who, who know me in person, like, and people who have met me, like I've had 
subscribers or, or people at work, uh, like photo expos come up to me and meet me. And they always tell me, and this is like the biggest compliment ever. They always tell me, wow, you're, you're the same as you are in your YouTube videos. And I think to myself, what well, I mean, yeah, I, I can't imagine somebody not being the way that they are on as they portray themselves through a YouTube video. But I, when I ask them, they're like, no, like I've met so many people who I feel uh, I perceive them to be like this, but they end up being like not what I thought and they're not the same. And so it's just really refreshing to hear that throughout it all that I still like people perceive me like that. So I think that's just the biggest compliment to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no doubt that's part of your success is, you know, your authenticity. You know, we've certainly enjoyed chatting with you as well. And just that who you are shines through. And I know that, that that's super important. People want to know that who you are is who you are. You're not faking it. And so yeah. I think that's part of your success. People are saying here in the chat room, I want to meet you because I feel like that kind of personality makes people feel like they're your friend, right? Where they feel comfortable. Yeah, I you. love me. I love when people come up to me and are like, there's some people, they break my heart. They're like, some someone tweeted me because I was, I think I was at like an expo and they're like, I was too nervous to come up to you, but I just wanted to say like, thank you for, I watch your channel, my fan. Um, I, I DM'd her and I was like, what? Like, oh my God, don't ever be scared to come up to me. Like I would have loved to have meet you. Like next time you see me, like, please come tell me hi. So it's always a pleasure to meet all of you guys. Like I absolutely love that. I think it's connecting with people who support you. Super important because without those people, you wouldn't have the platform that you have. So Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, that's an interesting question, Zach asked. I know um, we're, we only got a couple of minutes left with you, but the comment okay. section, that is such um, a thing today with social media, isn't it? Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, and it can be an anxious world to enter into the room of the comment section. When you post a video, do you read all the comments or do you just like, nope, I'm just going to walk away? I've, I've done a little bit of both. Like sometimes I don't read the comments, but I, I like to hear feedback. I think it's important to listen to your audience. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times they, they, they are trying to just be honest with you. And I'd rather hear it from them and someone be honest with me than maybe somebody I personally know who's, who's not going to be real with me. And mm-hmm. I, I really do value their feedback. Like I, I do read some of the comments and I think it is important that all creators do that at some point and, and hear the feedback. Like I, I love hearing feedback from my audience, what they want to see, what they don't really care for. And I, of course, you know, you want to stay true to yourself and post what you like to post, but at the same time, creating on YouTube, you're creating for the actual audience. So it makes sense to listen to their feedback. And a lot of them are, are like a lot of them. There's some people that post a comment like, oh, well, I can't believe you did this. Um, I don't really like this video, blah, blah, blah. And then I would re- like, I, they would expect me to reply like, okay, then don't watch it. Blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But I would reply like, okay, like, let me know what you want to what you want to see next. Like, I, I would like to hear your feedback on it. Thanks for your comment. And then they would reply back. Like, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to make it sound like that, but I would like to. So I feel like people don't really mean any harm. And if you just talk to them, you'll just see, it's just somebody who wants to just relay a message and maybe it's not in the way that you are, are used to. So I, I try to approach it like that. <laughs> Wow. That's a, I, I love that. Just like giving them the benefit of the doubt and approaching with kindness, which like what, what an awesome approach and what an awesome example for, for any of us who down the road, if we end up encountering some unwarranted negative feedback, I think that's, that's really good advice for how to step uh, into dealing with it. As we move towards the, the end of our time together, I'd love to know what are a few things, a few goals um, or plans uh, or things you want to learn over the next year, what are you hoping for? I want to do a little bit more film. I actually bought a medium format camera. I bought this like a couple months ago. I was supposed to make a video about it, but I never, never, <laughs> never happened. I'm just, oh, I, I, you guys, I, I need crazy. help with my YouTube videos. <laughs> I want to start doing more film. Um, my friend Valanda's really got me into it. He's an excellent film photographer. He really inspired me. He let me use his Mamiya camera and film camera. And I just, I loved the quality. I loved shooting with it. It's really heavy though. I probably, I didn't get that one, the one that he has, but uh, I got another medium format Mamiya camera. I'm super excited to see what film photography brings me and how it changes up my photography. 
And by the way, can I just say something? Yeah. Um, (laughs) It's funny because Zach's like, yeah, it's a good example. Like the comment thing. Don't get it twisted though. I get petty sometimes. Okay. Like if there's a comment, (laughs) listen. I'm I'm going to go read your comment section and just see. (laughs) I've been petty sometimes. Like if you're trying to write something, I'm like, no, I'm going to stop you right there because it's not, no. (laughs) So uh, definitely not an angel in the comments, but you know, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna make a burner account just to try to bring out petty jazz. It's all Z- you guys, it's all Zach. <laughs> it's all Zach. It's all Zach. Um, okay, so just real quick, um, just if you were to challenge everybody listening, watching right now, with one challenge when it comes to their creative journey, what would you put up? What, what What's the Jessica Covesi challenge for 2021 that we can apply to our creative journeys? I would say reach out to a model or an agency or another photographer without fear of being rejected. Just do it. Mm. Go for oh, it. I and like just that. see what happens. Uh, you heard it here first, people. Reach Let's out to one person. Yeah, put yourself out there. Yourself. Reach out to one person. If there's a model you really want to work with, I get so nervous. There's some people I'm like, you know, I'm not even going to embarrass myself so I can get rejected. Like, I'm not going to reach out. But I think it says a lot about you as a person hmm. if you are the first to reach out and you show that confidence. Hmm. I think yeah. people respond really well to it. They're like, oh, okay. Like, this yeah. person wants to work with me. Maybe they don't even get that a lot. People in the chat room are loving that, by the way. They're like, let's get it. This is great advice. This is so encouraging. (laughs) They're loving this. This is a great challenge. This is what they need. I can't, I'm trying to read all the comments and they're going so fast, but that was really, really awesome. So what we're going to do for sake of accountability too, the next, the start of the next show, we're going to ask people who they reached out to and how it went. Scott right, and I are each going to have an answer too. So oh, well, I'll have an answer. I'm going to DM an somebody. Um, One of the last things we do with each guest that we have uh, is ask for a hand-me-down. So we don't want some of your old clothes, but we do want a piece of advice that was given to you that mattered to you that then you can pass on to us. So what is your hand-me-down for our audience? Okay, so... I just have to say the reason why I reacted to that is because before the show, Scott was telling me about that. And this is what I told him. I was like, my family's Arab. We don't really like, they don't really, they don't, I don't get a lot of wisdom like that. It's just kind of like, okay, go clean the dishes, stop talking, like whatever. Um, You know, Arabs are very, you know, I got some wise people in my family, but I don't know that I remember anything that really impacted me in terms of my career. I think if you, if you really want my honest, honesty in, in this, I would say all the people from my school that like throughout my schooling or classmates that kind of doubted me, like everybody used to tell me, oh, you're going into graphic design. Like, what are you going to do with graphic design? How are you going to get a job? They all, they kind of thought it was, I don't think they really took me seriously. A lot of the people in my school because a lot of them were going into medicine and pharmacy and they were all becoming doctors which is amazing but when it came to me it just like they were like oh I'm gonna be a doctor what about you and I'm like oh I'm doing graphic design they're like oh so I always kind of got that response from people especially in my community like I will I will never forget I was shooting I was shooting an engagement and I was sitting at this table um like taking taking my break to eat and they would like tell me like oh you can go sit with some of the guests like there would be like empty seats so I would go and sit which I don't do now but in the earlier like my clients would be like oh like come sit and on this table with my family or my friends so I would go sit and just eat and then get up and finish the rest of the photo the photos and this one doctor I believe he like he was asking me he's like oh um are you doing the photography I'm like yeah I'm like what do you do he's like oh I'm a neurologist I was like oh cool yeah and he's like so you just do photography he's like oh you just do photography I was like I was like yeah you know I do this full-time he's like oh Uh and he was like so he was he just I don't know it was just you could like kind of feel the tension I'm like okay I'm sorry I'm a loser to you I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm not a neurologist yeah you know but look at you now 130 million views people are loving your work so many people in the chat room so inspired by you and so you chose the right path, my friend, and you're doing great. Thank and you. I know that Thank this you. has been such an incredible hour of just like information. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We've got um, the win of the week coming up as well as the winner of the mystery box. But oh, we're going to give it away. Ooh, Is that from mystery- Mario? So you yeah. have to play video games. <laughs> yeah. Is it- mystery box. Is it? Right. Oh, all right. There's a mystery okay. thing. He like hits it. Black mystery yep. block. Yeah, you win one gold coin. 
Congratulations. Wait, is there the mystery box? Yeah, I have one. I played like Mario a as a yellow. kid, but like I literally had the joystick and you'd like run them around and bonk their head on top of things and <laughs> hit the turtle and hit the coin. Do you remember there that you one? Go. What is that, one? Um, is that still happening? Is he hitting the turtles? He's, he's still hitting the turtles. He's still hitting not the turtle? turtle. On the Commodore you 64. Mean Koopa? I had a Commodore 64, okay, guys? You mean Koopa? Koopa. What's and the Goombas. Koopa? You got you to gotta knock the Goombas. They have names now. Say, we didn't have names back then. It was just turtle. Turtle and gold coin. <laughs> I don't think he was never called turtle. He was, we didn't have the internet. We had to tell, like, people just said things. That's a turtle. We're like, okay, it's a turtle. It's There's a no turtle. Google. There's no Google. <laughs> just, that's true. That's true. It's a turtle. Yeah. It was a turtle. It's a it turtle. was a turtle. It was a gold coin. Okay. So anyway, all that to say, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, can we give a big round of applause? And also, just out of interest sake, everyone say where you're from in the chat room. We never... We never saw where you're from, just so we can see where everybody's coming from. Slovenia, Greece, yeah. Brazil, Ecuador, uh, Tampa, uh, well, Finland, England, Greece, Maryland, Argentina. Wow. I can't oh, even keep up. Really Turkey, Poland. Listen to this, Jess. All these people from Whoa. all of these places that's in the world. Awesome. Mexico, California, Calgary, Italy, Italy? London. Yeah, um, at Laguna Beach, Ecuador. All these people tuned in for you. So isn't that so encouraging? That is amazing. I saw somebody who was in, um, who was Lebanese living in Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Okay, well, once again, know what they before we let you go, Jess, um, for the for the three people in the chat who don't know where to find you, where oh, yeah. can we find you and follow along with your work? Feel free to plug anything you want us to check out. My YouTube channel and you got my Instagram, Jessica, if you want. You don't have TikTok. to. TikTok. TikTok. Dude, my TikTok needs, I need to start making TikToks. Those are so hard. Let's do a duet. We'll, I'll do at you. I will do, if I know how to do it, I will do at you. I know, I still don't know how to do half the things. <laughs> you guys, here's what I want to do. I want to okay. do a photographers among us. Okay. What does that oh, mean? Oh, okay. I'll get in on that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what is that? What is that? <laughs> Explain to me. I'm learning. This is in much educational. Uh, Scott, video. remember that time we played Cutthroat Mafia in the Airbnb and we were yeah. running around? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, that, yeah. but a video game. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I, send Somebody's me this like, game. stop it, Scott. Somebody go to game. What's that store? GameStop? Is that the name of the store? Wait, it's yeah. just, it's a free app. I'll set you up after. Oh, this. you don't need to send me anything in the mail? No, <laughs> no, that one's free. Okay. Send yeah, yeah. Among Us. I play Among Us for like three hours a week with middle school students. It's like, <laughs> I've played way too much of that game. We'll get it, we'll get it set up. We'll get it set up. Do um, you win? Awesome. Do you actually win? or? Oh, of course, Jess. Come on. Someone just called me a boomer. Oh my God. Are you joking me? <laughs> Scott, that would be a sweet TikTok account where we just- Okay, get, you know, boomer. Like, oh, what? We need to start a TikTok <laughs> account where we ask Scott like to describe certain video games and we just record it. He's like, yeah, Mario, he bonks his head on a turtle. I don't know what to tell you. I <laughs> should do live reaction videos to games because I would have no- Clue, what's happening? Would you watch that? That will be. I would, I would watch the heck out of that. Oh, God, yeah. Live reacts to video games. I'll just be like, "What's happening? Who's that? Who's that man? Why does he have a sword?" <laughs> hey, well, you know what? Just like the last time we had you on, Jess, we are leaving this call with a whole bunch of new things that we need to do. And the last time we left a call with you, we came back with this show. So once again, uh, we've got another golden nugget idea, which is Scott explaining video games. You Scott keep bringing us ideas. All you do is make us work. As soon as you leave our show, you give us new ideas to make us work. So. That's what I'm here for. Well, that's but the, hand, the hand me down she got was what? The, what? hand me down she got was stop talking, do the dishes, and now the hand me down she's giving to us is um, go make another social media channel. So she really they did don't want this done. to end. What are you saying, Jess? I was saying. <laughs> Somebody commented that somebody asked you, like, what's an iPhone? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I do have an iPhone, people. Okay. Like, I'm not 90, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. I need to drink some water. You guys are hilarious. Oh, this was yeah. so much fun. We know we've gone over time. The YouTube will be shorter. Calm down, everybody. We're having fun. Someone said, uh, someone said, poor Scott. They don't want this to end. We are having a blast. Too. So a few things coming up. Careful, Scott says Carolyn. I'm 62. Carolyn, you and I, we can hang out. You and me. All right. So guys, thank you so much for this. Jess, we are going to uh, move you to the audience and we're going to give away some prizes. Everybody here. say thank you, Jessica. Yes, and then thank stick you. around for the last five so minutes of the show, everybody. Thank you, Jess. Fantastic. We'll see you, soon. you are the best. Thank you guys for having me. You are thank awesome. You. Coming. Thank that was you. great.
I feel like that was an incredible conversation with Jessica. A lot of fun. She gave us so much insight. Um, at the totally. same time, we laughed a lot. We cried. But we learned some things. A lot of people saying in the chat room how valuable this was. So everybody, we have come up. We're going to give away the mystery box in about three minutes here. But we've come to the win of the week. Everybody, you throw, of the week. throw your win of the week. Something that you did this week that was really great in your life, whether you started a blog um, you know, anything you went for a walk, you did something new. We wanted this segment to be all about the community. And if you don't have a win of the week, we want you to think about things that you can start applying yourself to and, and set a little bit of a vision for your own life. So start throwing your win of the week. Someone says they did their first animation. Um, if, that's you so yours, if you sent yours at the beginning, uh, send it again, because I will not be able to find that in the chat at this point. Right. Someone just said they started using TikTok. Someone just uh, got a new internship. Congratulations. Someone said pitch to their dream brand. Um, this is so cool. Getting back oh, in the car. Do you got any there, Zach? Yeah, this one's from Melissa. My win of the week, we're hosting a free virtual retreat for caregivers of Alzheimer's and other dementias for 200 wow. caregivers on Friday. Wow. So proud of this, how we are serving this community who are so isolated right now. Melissa, I absolutely love that. She put her website and I will read it out here. www.caregiver wellnessretreat.com. How cool. So cool. I love all of those things. Some more win of the weeks, just throw them in there real quick. We'll wrap this up in two seconds, but we just want this to be a time where people can share what they're doing. It's so cool. Someone said they secured, Seth said he secured an ad campaign. Hey, um, hello, Seth. that's awesome. Oh, this is cool. yeah. I got a whiteboard to write down all my ideas and tasks instead of them floating around in my head. Also developing a new aesthetic for IG. It's awesome. Sometimes writing things down and seeing them can be such a valuable move. Nice that way. is so cool. And um, Isabel is saying that she found this new eye thing. I can't read the whole comment. <laughs> <laughs> it moved. It moved too quick. Let me find it here. I'll, I'll find it back. Oh, she okay. says, uh, I found out this new eye yoga place. I joined their class a few days back. Let's see in a few weeks if that really works and helps me get rid of my glasses. Oh, no way. Yoga for your eyes. That's wow. There's yoga for your eyes? No way. Well, then the, I mean, I've heard of goat yoga, but this yoga for the eyes, that's so cool. Or the, the eye dentists are going to be mad if they lose the business. <laughs> wow. The eye dentists. I love Win of the Week. <laughs> it is so awesome. Someone says they're learning German and um, any others? Just two more, Zach, and then we're going to do the mystery box. Yeah, I got one here from uh, Cassandra. My Win of the Week. I had surgery on Thursday last week. My win is healing and my recovery is going smoothly. Just had my first walk yesterday. Cassandra, nice. congrats on getting back on your own two feet. That's fantastic. That is awesome. And uh, our last one here is I got my morning run up to 2.8 kilometers. That's Ethan. Ethan, congratulations. That's 2.8 kilometers more than I traveled this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so many cool wins of the week. And so we want this show to be your show. This is your time where you come and you learn and you laugh and we get to know you in the chat room. You get to know each other and that, that, let this be your community. Let this be the people that you engage with and your time where you're, whether you're clicking play, doing housework around the house, have us on in the background or whether you're sitting down chatting, just engage. Let this be your show, your hour, where you can connect with all of us. This has been so fun. All right, Zach, it is time for the mystery box. I know that it's underneath your desk. Man, I brought a crowbar. I brought a crowbar to pry that thing open. Okay. And first, should we unveil the winner of the mystery box and then tell the winner uh, what they are winning? I just got a text from, uh, from our lovely producer, Jonathan Zodeman. Yeah, talking with the Socality team, and they uh, they chose a winner. Did you did you get that text too, Scott? Do you see? I it? did. I am a, I I see it. So, do you want to announce the name of the winner? I would love to. Uh, the winner is Millie Stevens. Woo! Congratulations, Millie! Millie. everyone! Let's hear it from Millie. Everyone's cheering. They're clapping. They're celebrating Millie. Millie, you are awesome. Wherever you are in the world, where are you from, Millie? This is so incredible. I think she said the UK. And um, wow. So lots of lots of quality insights throughout the uh, chat. I saw a number of of Millie's uh, ideas come up. Uh, also, though, challenged me to a we baseball uh, competition. So while Millie did win the mystery box, she's better be prepared for a loss in another department. Uh, so enjoy the victory while it's happening because your time's running out. Awesome. Well, listen, Millie, you are the first winner of our very first mystery box ever. And let's reveal what you won. Zach, why don't you reveal what Millie is okay, receiving? Let me see if I can open this thing. Okay, open it up. I know it's really heavy. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a battle. Hold on. I might need to get help. <laughs> you need an assistant. I really do. Oh. <laughs> wow, did you guys hear that noise that thing made? I, I, I heard a magic dust to fall from the sky. Oh. 
I was not expecting that cloud of, of iridescent gold powder. It was I, beautiful. It was stunning. Wow. Okay. Well, hey, here we go. The uh, inside the mystery box was. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm a, I'm on face recognition here, so I'm trying to put it over my face. It'll focus. Yeah, there we go. That is a Wandered Provoke 31 liter backpack. That's the same backpack that Scott and I use for all of our photography journeys. It is a rugged and well designed backpack that our lovely friends at Wandered shoved into that massive ornate magical box for us. Yeah, and it's valued, I think, around, I can't remember the price, but it's definitely a couple hundred bucks. What's so, a couple hundred bucks? Absolutely. Yeah, like 300 yeah. bucks, 400 bucks. And so, Millie, um, right after this, we need to get your address and your details so we can get that sent out to you. Okay, just a few things, and then this is the end of the show. First of all, thank you so much for spending an hour with us. Make sure you follow us at Socality on Instagram. Make sure if you love the show and you're having fun, you want to see more of it, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll keep bringing this content. We'll keep bringing great guests, and we want to spend this time with you. So hit like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next show. We see you guys. See you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.